Today, Odin and I are headed out to Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge to do a little exploring as it's a renowned spot to watch the rockets take off from Cape Canaveral. With a rocket launch scheduled for next week, we wanted to find the perfect spot in advance. As we cross over the Indian River Lagoon, we pass by Parish Park on the left. A 36-acre park consisting of picnic shelters, restrooms, a boardwalk, fishing pier, and boat ramps with paved parking for about 50 cars and boat trailers. It's also a popular spot for watching shuttle launches. Odin does great in the car, but I know he's ready to get out and run around. After crossing the water, we enter the 140,000 acre refuge that's home to more than 1,500 species of plants and animals. The road we are looking for is Biolab Road, and it runs alongside Mosquito Lagoon, offering incredible scenery and spots to watch those rockets take off. Biolab Road also hosts a public boat ramp that provides direct access to Mosquito Lagoon. With high salinity levels like the nearby ocean, the lagoon is a spawning ground for saltwater fish and also hosts a resident population of Atlantic bottlenose dolphins. Before you start going down Biolab Road, you can actually put in here at the boat ramp which launches you out into Mosquito Lagoon. So I figured this would be a great place for Odin and I to stretch our legs and then we'll hop in and we'll go exploring farther down Biolab. But check these views out. The fish were jumping today and this area is known for its red drum and spotted sea trout. This is a popular kayaking destination and here at the Biolab Road boat ramp, there's a dedicated launch area just for kayaks and canoes. While we checked it out, I noticed a slight haze in the sky, almost like a distant smoke. Now, one of the coolest things about Mosquito Lagoon is that in the summer months, from June to October, these waters come alive at night with bioluminescence. I'm gonna to have to plan another trip out here with the kayaks and the rest of the family. There's helpful signage all over the refuge, and here at the boat ramp, you can learn about the lagoon's residents and its seagrass-based ecology. This is also home to the endangered West Indian manatees. The largest of these gentle giants was 15 feet long and weighed in at almost two tons. And while it is open to the public, there is a $10 fee to put in here, and the area is under video surveillance to help keep people honest. With the average depth of the Mosquito Lagoon being only four feet, it's not the ideal spot for a boat like mine, which straps just under three feet when trimmed down. It's better suited for bass boats that draft a lot more shallow. After taking in the boat ramp, Odin and I reached the official entrance to Biolab Road, where you need to stop and pay the $10 fee. You can also purchase an annual pass at the Visitor Center for $25, which grants you access to this road, the boat ramp, and other cool spots within the refuge. Don't forget to grab a map! I promised incredible scenery, and here it is. But that haze I saw at the boat ramp is definitely smoke. If this is your first time here, welcome. This is Odin, and I'm Don. Along with my wife Vanessa and our daughter Capri, we've traveled the country chasing adventure. But today, it's just me and the dog. So I kept seeing smoke in the distance and I couldn't pinpoint its location and now I have. While I'm driving down the road, I was able to look across some of the lagoon areas and see what's going on. Take a look for yourself.
So in my last video, you saw the end result of a controlled burn. And now you actually got to see a controlled burn in progress. That's pretty wild how the timing of that worked out. But let's get back in the Jeep and keep going. While scouting for the best spots along this narrow one-way road to pull over and watch the rocket launch next week, Odin and I found a little beach area. While you can't camp here overnight, which would be awesome, these shores are great spots for fishing, crabbing, and just enjoying a beautiful day. So out here on a sandy little beach and Odin has found some driftwood that he wants me to play fetch with. So I'm going to indulge him for a little bit and let him tire himself out and then maybe we'll hop back in the Jeep and keep going. Because Odin travels with me on a regular basis, I have an entire Molly panel from Invictus Off-Road on the back of the passenger seat filled with dog gear, including some collapsible water bowls like this one. If you adventure with your dog, remember to keep them nice and hydrated. Odin drank an entire liter of water before he had his fill, and it was time to move on. And don't forget to keep yourself hydrated as well. We were just cruising along with blue skies ahead of us, fairly oblivious to the danger we were soon to find ourselves in. Well, you guys got to see this. The smoke from that fire is a lot more intense. It's actually right back in the general area that we just came from. I'm walking down the trail a little bit. I want to get a cool shot of Everest. And when I looked in my mirror and saw this, I was like, holy cow, this is how fast these things can spread, even when they are controlled. Look at this. So this road here runs all the way along the lagoon and back to this area where we were. Look at that. Crazy. This was getting pretty intense for a controlled burn. So I'm watching the side mirrors right now and this fire is insane. I, it's probably time for Odin and I to start getting out of here. We're towards the home stretch, but yeah, we gotta keep an eye on it because that thing is spreading and it's spreading fast. now. Will it leap over some of these smaller lagoons? I'm not entirely sure. A quick phone call to the visitor center confirmed my worst fears. This was not a controlled burn. It's time to go, Odin. We got to get out of here. I 
don't need these anymore because the smoke is making the sky pretty dark. Wow, this is pretty crazy. Okay, the smoke is pretty thick and you can taste it. You can smell it, you can taste it. As Odin and I attempted to navigate our way out of the refuge, we ran into a road closure. We would have to turn around and find another way out. Unfortunately, the direction we came from was also filling with smoke. I mean, there's cars ahead of me right now that are doing 10 point turns on this two lane road just to get out of here. There's a little ash in the air. After several minutes that felt like hours, Odin and I were able to find a new path that led us out of the refuge and to safety. Be sure to subscribe and tune in next week as we plan to come back for the rocket launch, a nighttime sea turtle walk, and to check out the aftermath of the wildfire. See you next time. You got blue sky. Fire sky. <laughs>